All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, and also Pop Culture Cosmos, we truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, please give us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, tell a friend about us. We can use all the help and support we can get here at the Lakers Fast Break because we feel we're one of the best, if not the best, Lakers podcasts out there. So if you want your best information that's out there on the NBA and Lakers, just go ahead and pop with us each and every time out right here at the Lakers Fast Break podcast. And also make sure you check out our friends at thrivefantasy.com or download the Thrive Fantasy app to your mobile phone. You can go ahead and be part of the fun and action today for daily fantasy sports betting and player prompts on the NFL, PGA, NBA, eSports, and so much more. You can go ahead and check it out today, thrivefantasy.com. And with your first deposit, just type in the code LFB and they'll match it dollar for dollar up to $50 as long as your first deposit is $20 with our friends at Thrive Fantasy. Well, whoo. Is all I say because first quarter of the game today against New Orleans Pelicans didn't look so good. Looks like Kate came home and had, uh, they were just having this laissez faire attitude and whatnot. It just didn't look like they were all into it. They're back home getting some home cooking, maybe stayed up late last night eating all that home cooking. But you know what? Second half, down by one, kicked it into gear. Really, once again, the defense, the defense, and the more defense really kicked in in that second half, and the Lakers pulled away with an outstanding victory once again, 112-95. to And here today to talk about what's going on with the game, first off is my good friend. He is the mastermind behind Lakerholics.com. It is a good man indeed. I know him as Tom Wong, but you know him as Laker Tom, and Laker Tom not only will this chocolate milk taste good today, but the fact is because of you and your awesome wife, I get to go ahead and bite the head off this gingerbread man today right now. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. Ow. It's a good it's a good night for Laker fans, Gerald. Uh, I, was, I was so impressed with the defense tonight. It was just a, a marvelous exhibition. We held them to 37 points in the second half. AD... Um, I think, you know, there there were several key points in the game that I thought really stood out. And uh, I'd like to give props to Dennis Schroeder, man. I mean, Dennis Schroeder took uh, Alexander Walker and basically stole the ball from him two straight times coming down the court. And it was just beautiful. It, that triggered off that run that, that got us going at the, in the first half to, to finish off and get within a point of the game. And then in the... Uh, after halftime, after seeing what uh, Brandon Ingram had done and in, uh, in torching the Lakers, hitting first seven of his first eight shots, uh, Frank Vogel decided that uh, let's let's put Anthony Davis on him and see how he does. Um, and then by the end of the game, Brandon was totally frustrated. AD blocked three of his shots. There were three steals, totally dominated him. When AD went out of the game, they put LeBron James on him, and and you had to you had to really feel for poor Brandon. He started off with a game he thought he was going to have a 30 or 40 point game. Um, he still got 20 points in there, but he, he was pretty well shut down the rest of the half. Uh, Zion Williamson thought he was going to have a heyday also, and uh, it was good to see Zion turn up uh, negative on the test and actually get to play. So that was a pleasure to to, to play the Pelicans at full strength and uh, almost full strength because Lonzo yeah. Ball was out. Yeah, Lonzo was out. I I always like to see Lonzo play. I'm a big Lonzo fan. Uh, yes, as you have told me, I've uh, this is I've I've created uh, probably at least a dozen trades to get Lonzo back to the Lakers at various points during the year. Uh, well, it just depends on the value of the trade, Gerald. You know, you've got to you got to look at it from that standpoint. Uh, and you know, Lonzo's had a slow start to the year, so you never know. You never know. But at any rate, the Lakers were the number one team in the NBA in defensive rating going into the game. Uh, holding the holding the Pelicans to thirty five uh, to ninety five points tonight is definitely going to improve their standing. 
they they looked good. They shot close to 40% from three again, even after a slow start. Kenny was dead eye. Uh, Caruso, three for three from deep, and, and he's leading the team in three-point shooting. And he, I thought, had one of the best offensive games I've seen him have. Uh, made a couple of nice dishes inside. Funny uh, how it comes play. in a free agent contract year. Funny how that is. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know if that's funny. That's probably what every player really focuses on. But, you know, on the Lakers, you don't see it. Even when you see Kuzma, Kuzma had an excellent game, too. The thing that's still impressive about the Lakers, and in this particular game, I think, you know, the LeBron had how many points? Maybe 21 points for the game. Very that efficient, was, though. And that was the high. that was the high for the game, and he didn't take many shots. But... Everybody is making the right pass. You know, every time there's an opportunity for a hockey pass and a guy has an open shot on, on uh, above the, in the corner or above the, uh, above the break, he always seems to hit that man down in the corner. And if the corner guy's covered, that pass comes right back out. The Lakers shot open threes. And, and that's been the big difference this year offensively that, that they really have shot a lot more open threes than they did last year. And you can see it in a percentage. We're now third in the league in three-point percentage. So a great night all the way around. The fourth straight game with superb defense by the Lakers. As I said in the last podcast, the preseason is over. The Lakers get a warm-up on uh, Friday night against the uh, Warriors. And then uh, it's on to a seven-game road trip starting well, it's on uh, Monday. It's on Monday. You said Friday. Friday. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, You're right. Martin Luther right. King. Right. Uh, we, have day, the weekend yes. we have the weekend off. My yes. wife is, is gleeful that there's no podcast this weekend. Yes. <laughs> so, so uh, and then we, then we, after the, after the Monday game against the Warriors, we go on the road for seven games, starting with the Bucks. We'll meet the 76ers. We'll meet the Celtics. I don't think we play the Nets in that stretch, do we? I'll have to check on that, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting stretch. But, but, it, it but it'll be it'll be a defining opportunity for the Lakers to make a statement to uh, take their seven and zero start on the road. Uh, it'd be great to see them come back with a fourteen and zero road record. Wouldn't um, that be nice? Wouldn't that would be, be nice? really nice, especially considering the level of competition that they're going to face. But and um, also and also the fact that the Clippers and you got to give them credit because of the fact that they've managed to go ahead after some bumpy roads and a 50 point loss and what everybody tries yeah. to get on their case about they're right behind the lakers as far as record wise so yeah i think they can't they can't they're sleep. only one loss behind us and yeah and utah time. is is emerging as a as a great threat as well so but i want to go ahead and get this guy in here as well he had to reappear on us and he's back out again <laughs> He disappeared on us again, so we'll hopefully get Sean on here in a second. It's like espionage right now because he's in the dark. You know, it's just hard to tell where he's at, and then he's hitting his own button, I think, on to adjust and accidentally kicking himself out. But he is coming back on once again. It is the magic man, indeed. Sean, you're going to stay with us? You're in the dark. It feels like espionage, man. It feels like I should be giving you some kind of classified dossier or something. I'm sorry, sorry, man. I'm getting uh, text messages and uh, FaceTimes from a lot of different people right now. It's it's an odd. Good to time be popular, to be... man. It's good to be popular. Anyway, I got the glitches fixed. I should be okay, boys. Okay, sounds good. But how were your thoughts on today's game? Obviously, in the second half, it was pure domination from the get go. On the second half. First half, they were smiling and joking, and you could see even when they were down by 12, they didn't really care because they knew they were going to turn it back up. And wouldn't you know, they almost laissez-faired themselves into the lead by halftime, and as soon as they realized, you know what, we need to go ahead and just check ourselves in, they turned it on. It's kind of a scary thing that they're doing, but a lot of these great teams that we've seen over the years have done that where they have a tendency to go ahead and just turn it on when they want to go ahead and turn it on. Oh, absolutely, Gerald. I mean, AD shot 5 of 16, but he had 17 points. So that's more than one point for that PPP stat that I that I enjoy. He got to the free throw line 10 times again. I mean, it, it seems like he's rounding in the form. If he's not so much efficient from the field, but he's getting to the line. But he's, he's not shooting as well defense. from the line, which is concerning yeah. me. 
Well, he he wasn't to begin the season. He was shooting at one point sixty six percent. But well, he only shot then, seven for ten today. So. He did. Yeah. Previously on the road trip, he shot fourteen of fifteen. Okay, so over that time good. span, he's twenty one of twenty five for eighty four percent. So it, he's he's running in the form, so to speak, as well. Um, I thought, like Tom said, Caruso is three for three from the line from uh, beyond the arc. We're not going to see that too often, so that was nice. I, I'm not so sure. He's, I'm he's, not he's so not sure either. Free <laughs> agency, man. Confident. Dollar Rooney, Dollar Rooski. I need to get paid. Sure. Free agency, man. You know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just going to say this right now. I know. Oh, no, is he going to be around 50% for the entire year? No. Could he stay at close to 40? Remember, we saw a stretch when he first started getting some regular playing time in what was it, the 2018 season, the last 30 mm-hmm. games that he got the chance to play when he was coming from the, uh, when he was on that two way contract, so to speak. He he got really a, a, a just a big boost, and it was really nice to see him get that kind of boost. And it really was nice to see him get that kind of boost to start playing. And he shot really well, which was giving you know everybody out there hope for the future. Unfortunately, it did materialize last year, but it could be something where now now that there's a lot of money at stake and a money on the line for him, you could see a focus that he has. I mean, obviously you should do it just because of the fact you're winning, but you know, these players, man, you know, these players, when it comes down to the contract year, when it comes down to the money, if that extra little focus seems to help. And this month could be the only time he ever gets paid and paid well. You know, I don't know. I don't, I, I actually think that's an insult to, to Alex because well, that's just um, every NBA player. That's well, like, yeah, um, but Alex is an every, every NBA player. player. I think he's a guy who, who understands, and, and this is kind of an important point, I think he's a guy who understands that his contribution to the team comes from a lot of different things, but it's not necessarily scoring. No, and, I know and what I'm so I, he's, if, if there was a If there was a player who went out there in his contract year and didn't hoist up shots in order to try to make more money, it would be Alex Caruso, in my opinion. Yeah, because he's, he's not. I attribute his. I attribute his better shooting this season to one simple fact that he is totally waiting and taking only wide open threes in rhythm, and he's doing very much what Kuzma's doing, which is generally. And Kuzma's not doing it as well as Alex is doing, but Kuzma, what's really improved for him is the shot selection of not taking contested threes not taking uh, threes where he doesn't have his feet set, not taking threes off the move, you know, instead catch and shoot threes that uh, when you're wide open, which are the highest percentage shots you can take. And if you, if you looked at all three shots that, that Alex can tonight, they were all shots where he got a perfect pass right in his shooting stroke and, and really let go of the ball perfectly. And he got nothing but net on all three of them. So I'll disagree there with you, Gerald. I, I think that Alex Caruso isn't doing it for the contract. I think it's because he's got I'm just saying there's and he's improved, playing the best basketball of his career. I, I'm just saying there's also an improved performance issue because uh, there's extra motivation. And when there's an extra mm-hmm. motivation of possible millions on the line, which could be the difference from him, who doesn't score a lot. Three years, 30 he, million is what he's yeah. going to get. Yeah, but this could be a player if he it won't matter if how much he scores to get it. But then again, if it is if you know if his role on the Lakers declined or if his role on the Lakers were to be circumvented so much by THT or other players whatnot that he wasn't getting any time, then you would see a lot of money lost from what he had earned in the playoffs <laughs> over the course of the playoffs last year. But I don't think you could, what you're saying is true about I'd say what you're saying is true of 19 out of 20 NBA players. I mean, Christian Wood, a guy that, 20th NBA player, is Alex Caruso, man. Know, but Christian Wood is the same. It's the same deal. When did he finally put it all together? When did he finally put all those pieces together? Right. Okay, well, just before that playing time, that was the big thing for Christian. Yeah, but still, there was a lot. I mean, he's had his chances to go ahead and compete for jobs, and he had passed until his time finally came, where he could go ahead. And yes, he did get time. And it, and the opening did pass up, but it's not like he's not been in NBA camp before. He's been true, but he's he's also not the selfless player that Alex Caruso is. 
and that's true. And teams will see that because they see Alex as a glue guy, as someone who's going to be able to connect the dots for all these teams. But Sean, I want to get back to you because no, you haven't had a chance too much to, to speak already. And I still feel like giving you a classified dossier. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you're just in the shadows and you feel like just look all CIA-ish or whatever. There you go. There you go. Uh, but it's insert, you know, what's the Condor movie with Robert Redford, but, you know, going way Love back. That. But, yeah, Love Three that. Days Love of the that. Condor. Yeah. Three Days of the Condor. I saw yeah. that the other night. The way it's shot, Gerald, is amazing. You're right. This is Raphael from NBADraftJunkies.com. And you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. The better that these Marvel films do, the higher the standards are going to be for not just other films in general, but other Marvel films also. I think it's really hard to end a show with this many fans in a satisfying way. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Playing worldwide on radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. But I, I want to go ahead with you, my friend, and regardless of what Tom and I say. And again, I, I, there's a great uh, you know, focus by, by Alex Caruso and whatnot. I, I get that. And I understand that he is very cognizant of what role he plays on the team. But you've got to be as focused as a player to realize Caruso's not uh, just starting out in the league. He's already in his mid twenties. This is for him coming up upon his maximum value as a player. If he's going to go ahead and get a contract now, it's got to be right now. And there's just no two ways about it because one, two years, three years down the line, he's not going to be able to consistently get those big money deals. So for him, like Laker Tom saying, three years, $30 million. If he gets something like that out on the open market, or if the Lakers resign him for that, that is his biggest contract ever, or at least going to be darn close to it. Sean? I agree 100%, Gerald. I agree 100%. They're, they're, Alex understands his role, plays his role very well for, for a, a player of his age, his skill set. And he, it, it most like when it comes down to defense and effort, it's all about will, right? That's, that's what we were taught growing up. That's what you taught when you're coached. And he's Alex has the will and the want. He does. And that and that pays dividends in the end. However, there is a correlation between giving him more minutes and seeing a decline in that production. And it's not necessarily his fault. Like you said, Drill, he has a medical issue. I believe he has a, I'm not sure what he, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I know he has a medical issue. You're right. He's in his mid twenties. You know, if he plays around 20 to 25 minutes a night, that's the best Alex Caruso you're going to get. And if he's shooting three for three from deep and he's playing the kind of defense that he usually does, then that is worth three for 30. Absolutely. Yeah, and you're going to see him out in the open market. If he continues to play this well for the rest of the season, He's going to be out on the open market, whether it's the Lakers or somebody else, and they're going to pay a very big price for him because they want that type of guy on their team because it's already proven already once already that the guy on the, like that on the team, not only was he not the internet joke that some people made out him out to be, not only was he not a Twitter, uh, I guess, fantasy, he turned out to be a very solid contributor on a championship team, and that's what you want if going forward. I mean, just think of Alex Caruso on the Brooklyn Nets right now or on the Milwaukee Bucks, what kind of con- contribution he can make to that team as far as putting them in a position for a championship. I mean, he is that kind of glue guy that you could see making that small but vital difference in order from champion to just contender in, in the NBA. And, and segue, me, go ahead. You're right, Gerald. And to me, that would be the issue there with him going to, say, Milwaukee or Brooklyn. If he won them a champion, helped them win a championship, he'd never have to buy a beer in Milwaukee again. But, you know, well, I'm just LA, saying it's just he brings yeah, the hand to in L.A., man. What do you, you can't get better than that. Well, he's just he's a, he's a player that brings you intangibles and yeah, he, he brings to you more than what you see on the on the score sheet. He brings to you something more 
And that's why he's been able to click. And, and we've seen as fans, that's why he's become such an endearing player to like Lakers fans, because they see the value that he brings to the team. Other people were just confused out there last year why he was so high on the all-star voting, why he was being called Alex Caruso, the GOAT, and all that stuff, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit overdone and overblown, <laughs> but it comes out of the appreciation for what he brings to the team. And obviously, we've seen that already. So Alex Caruso, like I said, is now playing at a high level. And if he can consistently do that over the course of this year, not only will it lead to good fortunes for the Lakers, but it will lead also very good fortunes for him. But Laker Tom, I wanted to go ahead and since, again, this is another issue like where the Lakers are currently have the best record in the NBA. And there's no question that they're playing at the very best right now of any NBA team. But the margin right there is it's there. But it's there's still the Clippers won by 38, probably cementing Luke Walton's ex departure out in Sacramento any day now. I mean, that's it not it'll just it's not it's not just a small little fire. Uh, you know, he's not on just a hot seat. It's like a bonfire he's sitting on right now in Sacramento. So you could just count the days before he leaves. But losing by 38 at home to the Clippers, the Clippers had another strong second half. You have also Milwaukee proving itself again, although I thought Dallas should have won that game, but they, you know, they came back and Dallas really should have done what it took to take Dallas that game. Got to learn free throws, man. Exactly. And, One out of and 10 is, uh... yeah, that's, that's not good. Dallas shoots their free throws. They win that game. Uh, Brooklyn, you know, obviously everybody's talking about the, mm. the James Harden trade in which we discussed on our last show. So if you want to hear our thoughts on the James Harden, James Harden trade, please go ahead and check out the last show that we did. But James Harden coming there and making probably one of the best offenses ever. But defensively, they're obviously going to have their struggles. So there's still a question out there. But again, all these other teams are vying for contendership. Utah right now, nobody's talking about them. I had said before this year and last year, I thought they would be a contending team in the West. And they're certainly playing very well. Rudy Gobert with that nice Fat wallet that he's got now packed with lots of cash. He's still playing very well and anchoring that defense. But Donovan Mitchell is is playing well, and so is Mike Conley. And that's something that they didn't have last year was Mike Conley playing well. I mean, there's a lot of contenders out there. Is there anyone in mind? I know you spoke of Philadelphia the last time we spoke about them being a contender because Joel Embiid is playing at a almost MVP next to LeBron-like level. Are there are these the contenders that you're looking at? Is there anyone else? Boston, if they get healthy, they could be a contender. Is there anyone else out there that you're seeing? I think it's going to turn out to be, you know, the Lakers, the Nuggets, and the Clippers in the West, and the 76ers, Nets, and uh, Bucks in the East. Those are the three teams in each division or each conference that I think are are the main threats to be a competitors for a championship. Um Injuries, injuries and COVID could very well play a part in, you know, what happens as we go down the line. I mean, yeah, I really feel for Carl Anthony Towns, who after losing three or four family members to COVID now is six, six positive six. themselves. Is it six? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to go just, ahead and it's just, I, it, I want to, I just want to hold on. I, want, I just want to go ahead and send special yeah. thoughts out there to Carl Anthony Towns and his family that's from tough. all of us. That's just terrible. That is so going tough. On. And, and uh, now that he's know, got coronavirus too. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like Kyle, Kyle Kuzma said, the team that is most serious about the championship and whose players treat the risks of getting exposed to COVID and what it could do to your championship hopes and aspirations could be a major factor in who wins a championship this year. Um, this is the anti-bubble year, as far as I'm concerned. You still, you still don't have fans in the stands. You still don't have home court advantage, and you're, you know, it's the Lakers. Like the, we haven't lost on the road. We're seven and zero on the road. We're four and three. Finally, we get over five hundred at home. So it's, you know, it's, it's one of those seasons that's going to be wacky, and and all of a sudden you've got a lot of players on teams and a lot of cancellations, um, which is why the league, you know, just enforced all of these new rules supported by the players association to try to make sure that, that we don't end up canceling the season. So it's going to be, it's going to be one of those years. Um, 
it's interesting. The thing, the thing on the nets is going to be fascinating to see how they do. Um, and uh, you, you watch the struggles that Milwaukee is having it, you know, when the free throws didn't get shot. And, and even tonight watching, you know, Zion, uh, the Lakers did a great job contesting shots at the rim. And all of that early talk about how we were going to miss JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard and the rim protection, um, we're blocking more shots now than we did last year at this point in time. And we have a higher ranked defense and we're allowing fewer points. And it's a totally different type of defensive orientation that we've taken. So, you know, you have to give Frank Vogel and the coaching staff, as well as the Lakers front office, great credit for the job they did in, in the off season and the job the coaching staff has done getting this new defense implemented and the team off to a good start in another unprecedented season that has so many challenges that we've never seen before. So Absolutely. you got to be, you got to be thrilled as a Laker fan where we are right now. The team is, is really hitting its stride and, and, If we can keep it up, I think we have a good chance for a wire-to-wire win in our 18th championship. Still a long way to go, but uh, time is flying because we're we're past the 20% mark of the season at this point in time. You know, we're moving on now toward toward getting close to maybe a third of this, a quarter of the season, and then before we know it, it's going to be a third of the season. You know, and the way that we're playing and the depth, uh, you know, the ability to like tonight. Taylor Horton Tucker was the guy who basically sat out a game. Basically, he got in at the end just when LeBron and AD went to the bench for their for a little, you know, final rest and so forth. But the Lakers have discovered the key to load management, which is basically blow out the other team and make it easy, you know. And and those moves that that uh, Rob Palinka did to to bring in Harrell and to bring in Schroeder. And to give us some more depth again, we had, uh, you know, I think this is the third or fourth game in a row where we've had six players in double figures. That's, you know, that's a pretty hard formula for other teams to handle, uh, especially when you play the kind of defense that we play. Absolutely. Sean, I want you to go ahead and interject in here. Is there some teams that you are concerned about more than others? Obviously, we haven't gotten a good beat yet for Brooklyn, and we won't for quite some time. I mean, their first game that they're going to play together will most likely be on Martin Luther King Day on Monday. But we Guess will not see, yeah, we but we will not see the full fruits of that labor until about maybe March. mid-February, probably before we actually go ahead and see them gelling as as a unit. Mm-hmm. But I want to go ahead and ask you in regards to some teams that you feel are going to compete at a level that should at least make the Lakers look back and say, you know what, this is a team that if we don't play the right way can contend in the Western or Eastern conference. Yeah, Gerald, I just have to piggyback off to yourself and Tom and everyone on the jump and NBA on inside the NBA. You don't have have to piggyback on the jump, man. You know, that's okay. They get enough pub as is. It's a it's a wonky year. Um, you look, I've se- I've been watching the NBA playoffs. Uh, you know, my mem- memory serves me for about thirty years, so I've seen a lot. I've seen a sixty-two win Sonics team lose to five games to the Nuggets. I remember Dikembe Mutombo clutching the ball. I remember an eight seed Golden State team defeating a sixty win Mavs team, and Dirk looked like. He's seen a ghost. <laughs> so I see a team like the Pacers or possibly even a team like Phoenix disrupting somebody's season, depending on who you're, you're matched up against. I mean, Miami and Indiana could disrupt the Eastern Conference because Miami's going to go through a couple winning streaks themselves and they're not going to find themselves in the playing tournament. They're at least going to be that sixth, fifth seed. And if you're playing an Indiana Pacers team with uh, Sabonis and Miles Turner, that can wear on you in seven games. And even if you survive a series like that, Gerald, what if you have to play a Sixers team the next round? Or you have to play a Nets team the next round? If you're the Bucks, do you really want to see the Pacers in the first round? I wouldn't. 
No, and that's something that we're going to have to keep on continuing to focus on. But yes, the Pacers, who've played pretty good this year, uh, have a lot of deserve a lot of credit. And now that they have Karis Levert and don't have the disgruntled Victor Oladipo in town, that could be something very beneficial for them. I'm not sure if it's going to be a perfect fit because he's not the lights out shooter that you want. He's a scorer and is going to need the ball. But then again, TJ Warren being out of the lineup for pretty much most of the season, from what I understand, I don't think it's a season ender, but I think it's most of the season he'll be gone. That should pick up some of the slack scoring wise for them. It's just, will they have enough efficiency and also shot making ability from the outside? We'll have to wait and see, but I do like Indiana as far as a team that could surprise in the East. In the West, I know a lot of people are picking Phoenix, who are still at or near the top. I mean, they're still very competitive out there. Again, I don't think people should sleep on some teams that are out there like Golden State. Whenever you have Curry, you're just going to go ahead and could be susceptible to a 50-point Curry barrage at any point in time. Mm-hmm. And then you also have, again, Utah, who I think is something a, a team that you just do, should not underestimate. I know Laker Tom mentioned Denver and Nikola Jokic. Even though the team has been had, even though that team has had its up and ups and downs, I think they're that's still Nikola Jokic is having a tremendous season. And again, is the the center that's since I think Wilt Chamberlain. I think I mentioned it last week on the podcast that he is the first center to be leading the league in assists. And if he continues to do so, that could possibly be the case. But okay, Mr. Historian, I must be wrong on something with your hand up. No, you're absolutely 100% correct. I just wanted to piggyback. Uh, Composto is my new favorite player in the NBA. That guy is Uh, so much fun to watch. His passes are brilliant. And he plays a hard-nosed kind of defense. He's my new favorite player in the NBA. Well, that's something, again, they've had their ups and downs because I know that getting rid of several of their top defenders has taken a bite defensively out of that team. And now they've taken the mentality that a lot of these other teams have. I'm talking about Portland. I'm talking about Brooklyn. I'm talking about Milwaukee, in a sense, as well. A lot of teams are out there that now say, you know what, we're going to try and outscore you. We can't defend you the way we used to, but we're going to try and outscore you. And that is a recipe for disaster as long as you keep on trying to hold on to that. So that could be a lot a lot of issues. And the Lakers early on were falling into that. But now, mm-hmm. again, it took AD and his tirade to go ahead and kick the, start this defense, but it certainly kicked into gear. Go ahead, Sean. Five in a row, Gerald. Five in a row. And we're well, that's great. Counting. Well, they're still counting, but they got to keep it going because these teams are still breathing down their neck. I mean, the Lakers only have a one and a half game lead, I think, at this point in time over the rest of the NBA. They now have the biggest differential scoring wise in the NBA, which, again, Milwaukee had for so long. But the Lakers now have, I think, for the first time, any other team outside of Milwaukee in what, over two seasons? I think that's the case. So. That's a great sign for Lakers fans that they're doing what something we th- some of the things that we asked about last year, Tom, about winning big, about keeping that score up, allowing LeBron and AD the time to rest, playing a, a you know a type of rotation that's going to make sense. These are some of the things that they weren't figuring out during the course of the season, Tom, but they're sure figuring it out now, and that's what I like to see the most. That's why I have more confidence now than at, I did at this, you know, at this time last year I, or this point of time in the season in 2019. I have more confidence now in this team right now be, just because of they've, they've figured things out a lot quicker than they did in 2019. Yeah, you know, it's it's really a testament to how quickly, I mean, last year everybody was amazed at how with all of the new people coming in, AD being in there for the first time, how quickly the Lakers seemed to gel. And everybody was really impressed with the the charisma and the, and the chemistry from the bench and so forth. And they really started to develop a culture for defense. What's kind of amazing to me is that, and, and we are only, you know, 14 games into the season, but what's amazing to me is that this year's team is so much more confident when LeBron and AD are staggered and one of them is on the floor and one of them is on the bench. And it's because of the depth that they have with the other four players that are on the 
on the court. So you don't ever feel like at times, times last year, there were lots of times during the game and maybe as much as a third of the game where you really felt the other team maybe had a better five on the court than we did. Um, we still maybe had the best player with LeBron or AD, who whichever one was on the court, but the supporting cast was nowhere near as strong last year. And you and I would go to town. We would go and battle at each other, and I would try to convince you of that, but you did yeah. not want to believe that. Well, you know who, for example, last year at this point in time, KCP was being ravaged. He was yeah. called KFC. You had Danny Green always being ravaged as not being able to hit it. There were questions about Caruso because the goat stuff really didn't happen until later in the year. And Kuzma naturally was off to a terrible start because he was coming back from an injury. And yet we got off to a 25 and three start. And yet Twitter was just ravaging the Lakers reserves this year. You don't hear this about anybody. I mean, Uh, Kuzma, Kuzma still gets it. Yeah, Kuzma still gets it, but not really when you when you look at what he's doing and how he's contributing and what the players and the coaches think of the job he's doing. He's doing a great job. You look at who could be maybe the most disappointing guy, um, Matthews maybe. I mean, but yeah, yet yeah, Matthews is one of our top three point shooters now, and I watched him tonight play just terrific defense on on JJ Redick. He shut J.J. Reddick down. Reddick could not get – the only shot that Reddick made was that wild, crazy three that he made flying out of bounds on the, on, on the right side, you know, late in the game. But other than that, Matthews was just – was in his jersey all night long. Uh, he just couldn't get – he could not get a stationary three to shoot the whole night long. Kuzma's uh, finding ways to it to – impact on the game outside of a shaky shooting his shooting is going to come and go i think people are yep. just going to have to be inclined to go ahead he's going to be very streaky that's just the way well, i he think is. it's going to get better and better simply because we're getting more open shots the reason we're shooting 39 percent is because of open threes yeah i mean well kuzma is shooting you know. great i mean three for four from three-point lane but every time he tried to go inside that was an adventure that unfortunately he was not able to pass but 13 rebounds tonight, a very solid performance for him on that end. And, of course, yep. some pretty good defense as well. I think, again, it comes down to when it comes to Kuzma, I think there's a lot of expectations fans have and will always will have of Kuzma because of the way he started out his career and where it was heading into. And, unfortunately, and also, where because, also because he was the one guy. You, who, yeah, that stayed, who, that stayed it behind. It wasn't necessarily that we kept him because he was our choice to keep in the AD trade, it was simply because salary-wise, you had to get rid of Lonzo, you know, uh, and we would have rather kept Lonzo at that point in time rather than Guzma. Um, I don't know. But, that, I, I mean, at that, that you'd have actually, to talk to talk I, to the officials. I, I the Lakers were pretty yeah. much infatuated. There was with no Kuzma way that, that they time. could make the deal without Lonzo in the in the trade. But they could have given up Kuzma. I mean, just saying, if the, if if the Pelicans, I heard Kuzma was a hard no. That was the rumor that was going around that Kuzma was a hard no by Lakers management at that point in time. They were infatuated well, with what he could become. Kind of because he would have been just a little too much. Well, the potential. You want to give at, up everybody. You got to keep one guy. He the was the one guy that was affordable because of low salary to well, keep. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you the potential that he had at that time was so much more. No, I, I, I agree with you that a lot of the dissatisfaction with Kyle is because of the start he got. Yeah, and and frankly, the problem is is that he he's still a twenty point per game player whenever he starts. The problem but is that, that his position, not... the two positions he plays are played by LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and he's so never going to get that start. kind of time on this team yeah. to go ahead and be able to get that kind of minutes. Yeah. And, uh, and now again. he's got a deep team, but yeah. you know he, he's gonna he's gonna continue to do well. The the other thing too is that, that was important is that. Just like they did not give him up in the AD trade, they didn't give him up in the Danny Green trade for Schroeder either, you know. And everybody sort of expected that 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 when Danny went, it would really be a trade for Kyle. And Danny was the ballast was basically trade ballast in the deal. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I I'm glad Kuz is on the team. I haven't traded him once so far this season. In fact, the other day I was thinking about who would I trade on this team and. And whom would I even want to trade for to add to this team at this point in time? Alfonso McKinney and Jared Dudley. How about that? We could throw in 
cost us and yeah. uh and you know i mean but the simple fact of the matter is that the lakers have such a good team so the only reason they, they would make a trade would be if they could get a superstar if or they could get, get you know different size i would say and you know, they don't have the draft picks to really get one of those top guys that somebody is you know to get a to get you know a player like zach levine or I like for us still to get some size just as a backup, yeah. like like going to Sacramento. Miles Turner is who I love to get. Well, Miles Turner, yeah, well, but you're going to have well, to give out the bank for him. But maybe let's say like a Hassan Whiteside. I might Whiteside. give up the bank for Miles Turner. Hassan Whiteside, you could get for like a second yeah, rounder. Or, yeah. they, they, they'd probably give you Hassan Whiteside. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but Hassan Whiteside could block some shots or come, you know, do something in the pitch for 10 minutes if you needed to. Yeah. In case he got into foul trouble. I mean, somebody with experience like that. Again, we've talked about Dwayne Deadman, but he's still out there. Yeah. You know, I, I, so here's I a, here's a question for you. Do you think we're going to make a trade? I don't know. That's a good question. Or try the buyout market again. I think they're going to weigh who is coming out on the buyout market. I think, the, again, when it comes down to what I talked about with San Antonio, they're going to look at those assets to see if they're going to be traded. If not, those those individuals might be up for buyout market purposes. Magic Man, go ahead. Uh, Gerald, I think uh, Michael Jordan and the uh, Hornets. I was going to say, Hornets. Michael Jordan would be a great trade if it was 20 years ago. <laughs> Can we get the younger version, though, instead of the Wizards version? Yeah, that's, they, that's true. They have two bigs who have expiring contracts, Cody Zeller and Bismack Biombo. Let's Cody's- move on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Those are going to be the options, though. The Cavaliers have. I'll take Whiteside. Whiteside is an All Star compared to those two. Do not even go there. I agree, but Whiteside can but catch we, the ball. Well, 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 first off. well, well, well. We 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 can still trade second round picks. I I wouldn't mind trading two second round picks for Robin Lopez. Yeah, he's a he big helps. body. He helps. You know, uh, I actually think that I'm not so sure that the Lakers really think that they need. Another center. Well, I, I think uh, because well, there's a philosophy that they've adapted with their defense. Well, they got uh, rid of the Tom, drop coverage he, that those types of centers can only play. Yeah, but when, let me say are, this. Are let you, me say this. Hold on, guys. Let me say this. When Zion took out our entire power forward force this today, you know, and it looked like for a second there that he would not only knock out one but two players in Montrezl Harrell and also Markeith Morris. You're lacking size if those two are yeah, out of the game. As soon as we put Anthony Davis on him, that shut him down. We, yeah. Anthony Davis shut him down. Anthony Davis shut uh, Brandon Ingram down tonight. Go ahead, Sean. We, we, Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, yeah, Gerald, I was also going to say we also haven't seen Anthony Davis or Harold and or Marcus all against Utah, Rudy Gobert, and Derek Favors. We haven't seen uh, the Mavs with Chris Tapps and Boban. Boban is a horrible matchup for Marcus Harrell. That is a bad matchup in the bowl. He needs to look silly at times. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how we match up with these teams and if we do need another big. Because like we were talking about, Joe, like you said, if we play Utah, if we play at Denver, we're going to need another big. Right? It's going to be Marc Gasol who's going to guard those guys. Gasol's numbers I actually saw the other day. Gasol's numbers against Embiid – for example, are terrific. Embiid's never shot very well against him. His average is down below him. Everything that he does against him is, has been throughout his career difficult. Well, by the Simmons same token, by the, the same token, again, all of these so. big guys that you're talking about are going to go have to guard, are going to be pulled out of the out of the paint in order to guard Gasol. If we happen to play Harrell at the five in that particular situation, that doesn't mean that Harrell is going to guard the five. Anthony Davis will guard the five in that particular situation. We're playing a lot of small ball, catch hedge type of defense that is involving rotations and stopping. The whole the whole focus of the Lakers offense now is to stop guys who have the ball and can score off of the bounce. The, instead of blocking shots at the rim, our goal is to stop those guys who are going to get to the rim. That means stopping the James Hardens stopping the Zach Levines, stopping Dame Lillard, stopping them from getting in by hedging on them and forcing them to get rid of the ball and rotating quickly and fast. And we end up with a better average at the rim, a better defensive situation then because there are fewer shots taken at the rim. And that's exactly what the stats are saying about the Lakers defense today. 
When it comes to foul trouble or injury, it's going to be better for the Lakers to have an added big man. Again, they Four still have only 14 big. slots right now, so they still yeah, get that I magical know. slot. So they that's we'll still see. I, I, you, you may well be right, but I think that there's a good chance that they will look more for a wing defender as the 15th player. It's easier to find a big man than it is to find a wing defender. You yes, got a wing defender is going to have much bigger benefit to this team defensively. Oh than having another elite defender. For example, if Trevor Ariza became available, I don't have a doubt that they would take Ariza before they would take White. Oh, I'm sure they would. But you got to ask yourself, where is Ariza at in his career right now? So many injuries. He hasn't played a lot in over the past 18 months. You kind of concern yourself that could you be getting another J.R. Smith or Deion Waiters well, on but your also hands? You know that Whiteside is not a guy who is a great chemistry team man no uh, no he's got a bad reputation for sounds like dwight howard doesn't it yeah but My dwight brother. was pretty motivated then I, so you could know. hassan winning a championship kind of motivates these players. yeah well listen you can say that there's all there are some guys that you can't put on the lakers who are going to change their spots well, we said that about for, Dwight, and look what happened. But well, go ahead, yeah. Sean. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I, was, you, I, was, I think that came from you. I, I could go back in time to our first well, podcast. Listen, I, 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 I loved what Dwight did. I was glad to see him leave. Okay. Because I, I, <laughs> I just believe in playing sure. a different style of basketball. The That's style fair. of basketball we need to play in the playoffs is a lot more of stopping the number one scorers. We'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Hey, Lakers fans, looking for the best place to go for up-to-date news, information, original videos, articles, podcasts, opinion pieces, and discussions about the world champion, Los Angeles Lakers? Well, look no further than Lakerholics.com. With a legion of followers always there talking about everything Lakers and the NBA, there's no better place to go to share your fandom as the team heads toward another championship run. So stop by and be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. Okay, Sean, I want you to go ahead and tell everybody out there what you think, my friend. So go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, yeah, we're not going to get the George Hills of the world girl that they trade their line. I mean, George Hills not going to get bought out. Sam Presti wants a first-round pick for George Hill. Yeah. Some- if he shoots um, close to 50% three-point line, yeah, that's what he's going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Eastern Conference, I'm just thinking right now, um, like Tom was saying, the Lakers might oh, – I'm just spitballing here again. But, I mean, if Bradley Beal did become available, the Lakers couldn't offer draft picks, but they could offer a myriad of players that might interest the Wizards in some way, shape, or form. There are a couple other – players perimeter that we could use but like you said Gerald we don't have the assets to, to attain them we just and you couldn't get a Bradley Beal I mean we just don't have you see what it took to get James Harden it's going to take no, something I, I at, agree. near I, near yeah, that I, I mean, no no I yeah. I agree I'm just saying the the Lakers could offer the Wizards an intriguing deal of players not picks yeah, but see, right. the thing is, for Beal, you want players and picks, Thanks. and that's in these yeah. days. I mean, the exactly. hardened trade proved that you can then get. Then we'd be both. the Nets. <laughs> well, Who wants to be the Nets? I'd rather be the Lakers, frankly. Yeah, the Lakers right now, I think, have the better team still uh, than yep. the, depth. The, it's depth that's going to. Yeah. Just look at here's 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 your perfect example. Look at the Warriors today versus the Warriors two years ago. I mean. It was defense. They won that. They won those the, the, championships the, with defense, right? The first and with depth. Of and the, with depth, they had Iguodala. They had you know Sean they, Livingston. They, they had, had Sean Livingston. They had they had a great depth of lineup on that team that played defense and had camaraderie. The Lakers are the modern version of of what they were. They're today's version of the Warriors. Well, go the ahead, Sean. Lockdown defense and, yeah, and Gerald, great I, offense. I was going to say the, the first incarnation of the Heat didn't win a championship, but they got to the finals yeah. in the first year. I, I half expect the Bennett's to do that. Um, That's a young LeBron, though, I think. <laughs> That's the only reason why they did. I see the same KD before the injury. Yeah, he you looks know? like the same KD. He doesn't look like an injured guy coming back. Yeah, no. So no. In, of course, it is, it is early, but 
Now, are they really going to play him at the five? I, I think I read somewhere that Steve Nash said he's going to play him at the five. Yeah, there are going to yes, be times when you play small yes, ball, you're going to have to play him at the five. That's going to be a reality, and that's something that's going to be scary if it's played in the right fashion. Right. As much there, as well, much, the problem well, is when much, you go small well, like that, on, you've got to have some defenders. Hold, hold on, Lake Tom. As much will and want as Giannis has, I don't think he's up to KD's level. So in a seven-game series, I would still take the Nets over the Bucks just for that matchup alone. Go ahead, Tom. I, I tend to agree with Sean that I don't think the Bucks are going to come out of the East. I think the 76ers are probably going to come out of the East. Well, I had picked Brooklyn before the start of the year, and that was before the Harden trade, and I think so I'm going to stick to it. I think I'm going to stick to it. Well, it's a, it's a pretty good bet. I, I think that Vegas was probably behind you. The difference is, especially when you play small ball, is you've got to defend. You've got to defend. And you look at the talent between, I mean, who do you give the ball to? Hart? I mean, I, I heard the, uh, I heard, uh, I was listening to Sirius XM the other day and they were talking about the trade and, uh, I can't even remember who was the analyst who was basically coming out and saying that the solution has to be for Harden to play point guard, correct, and not to not to be a scorer, but to be a passer because he is, he he is a much better passer than and you know so he's the one and Kyrie's the two and KD's the five, but I'm not so sure that KD can handle the the you know. KD has the same, some of the same problems that AD does in being a pure five, in that he just doesn't have enough in his back pocket to play against a lot of the guys that play down there in the paint. He's that length, that, because... that length is dominate. That length can dominate you, but when you when you don't weigh as much as as guys like the guy kid we saw tonight, you know, uh, Zion. I mean, when Zion barrels into you, you're gonna go, you're gonna go back five or six feet. The way I, I, I kind of see it is exactly what the analyst said, Tom. It's um, the offense is going to be run through James, and it's going to be KD at the end of games. He's yeah. going to be the guy in the fourth quarter. That's the, yeah. that's the best potential for this team to reach the finals and give the La- the Lakers or the Clippers or the Nuggets or the Mavs how, however they can handle it. Because, Ky- Ky- like, if you look at their damn usage rates, my God, they're, like, in the top – I think the three out of the top five all time. Right, they're all so, well. They're all well into the middle thirties. Now, yeah. the one thing that they equals, have going that for, equals three guys for a hundred percent, which means the other two guys never touch the ball. <laughs> the one good thing they have coming, and this is the one argument that I've heard that says that this could work, is that James Harden has failed every time another superstar has come to join his team. This time. Harden is joining their team, even though it has only been their team for 14 games, you know, which is a stretch to say that that's their team. But he is going to, he's going to KD and Kyrie's team. And so the one hope there is that maybe he won't be satisfied with passing the ball. But, you know, his passes always come after pounding the ball on the ground for 15, 20 seconds, you know, so it's, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's going to work. And I know do. there's also just the the volatility of the of the the volatility of the Eagles. I think is going to eventually, and the lack of defense. Those are the two well, things that I, are really going to hurt them. Can I ask you guys a question? Um, did you did you discuss the idea that um, more than being a big three, James Harden was more of an insurance policy? For the Kyrie yeah, in case Kyrie, yeah. Kyrie Irving, yes, we discussed that at you know, in case the the volatility of Kyrie Irving and his actions because he's just so out there, you never know what to expect. Or, or there was the alternate theory that they were really sort of like how teams will draft somebody and hide him in Europe for a year. They were really hiding him, and and the only reason that he was you know had pulled this whole stun of not showing up was so nobody would want to say that the only reason I'll trade you Harden is if you give me Kyrie. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And over the course of the next few weeks, we will see how Brooklyn develops as a team, as a unit. We'll see if they do mesh or if they do start to get, you know, fighting back and forth and egos come into play. So we'll see how that works out itself out. 
and see if they will be a true contender for the NBA title and or at least the NBA Eastern Conference is concerned. But the Lakers right now just wanted to go ahead and close this on out. They did go ahead and win way back when we talked about it at the beginning of the show, 112 <laughs> to 95. That's what happens when you win so big and you win so easy each and every time out. And of course, that means the Lakers do have the NBA's best record at 10, at 11 and three. So you want to go ahead and defense, 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 kicked it in in the second half. And believe me, it was just something great to see, but they do have, like I said, uh, the NBA's best record, the NBA's best point differential. And right now are, have won five games in a row heading into a weekend off and a game on Monday, which we will be back for. But before we head on out guys, I know you guys are working on stuff for Lakerholics.com. Big shout out again to Jamie Sweet, who I know has got five great things for the Lakers coming up in the near future when he can. I know he's very busy with his time, so we want to wish our best out to him. But before we head on out, Magic Man, what kind of magic are you working at Lakerholics.com? Hope it's not more secret dossiers with confidential <laughs> you know, stuff that's right there. Gonna gonna yeah. have to start calling you the guy that makes the uh, the pillows out there that leaves the notes open that everybody can go ahead and take pictures of like so, like it's on the news today. <laughs> Gerald, if I have a cigarette in my hands and I wasn't wearing the hat, you might be playing the X Files theme right now. Oh, there you go, there you go. I can't do the copyright reasons, but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um. You know, Gerald, it's been a really strange, outside of COVID, it's been a really strange winter on the East Coast. We haven't gotten a lot of snow. We haven't got a lot of ice. Not a lot of precipitation. It's It's been almost, it's been weird. And usually going into this time of year in a normal year, the Grammy trip, you're thinking the Lakers would, would enjoy this time together, be bond, bonded together. And they have no choice again because we're in COVID. Everyone's locked down. You're going to New York. You're going to the East Coast. Nothing's open. This is going to trouble James Harden. I can assure you, James, that the gentlemen's clubs are not open on the East Coast. You're not in Houston anymore. So I'm going to be writing about how the Lakers really need to hunker down here. We, we can't let, you know, we have to stop, be precautious and, and try and keep COVID out of the universe as best we can. But we know we have to live with it. We're not in the bubble anymore. But I do appreciate everything that you're doing for us here. And also check out what you're doing at Lakerholics.com. But before we head on out, you got to go ahead and check out everything that he's doing on his medium.com site. And of course, everything that he's doing today at Lakerholics.com. It is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, what you got in store for us? I mean, it's got to be all good news, right? Yeah, it is all good news. Uh, I'm I'm still working on an article that has to do with the Lakers defense and uh, leaning back to an old Bobby Knight quote that uh, defense is just offense without the basketball. And I think that's what I consider to be the perfect description of the Lakers defense. That and also he threw chairs. Let's go ahead and say he never saw a chair that he didn't like to throw. It's true, but when you think about defense, just by the nature of the definition, it's it's sort of passive. It's sort of reactive. It's not, you know, it's not like offense. It's different. But the Lakers, the Lakers treated a little differently because the Lakers, their defense is their offense, is their best offense and moving ahead for that. So it's uh, uh, working on that. And then the other, the other good news, too, is that uh, I finally found out that Kaiser in Northern California is taking appointments for COVID shots. And my uh, sister-in-law just uh, got an appointment on the 25th, had to, had to wait for three hours to get it. But there's a phone number that we can actually call now. So I'm looking forward to being able to get a COVID shot. And uh, I'll probably be writing tomorrow while I'm sitting there with my phone on hold for three hours. I hope you get a chance to go ahead and do it soon. I hope yeah. I do too as well. I'm, I'm, I know I've got a, a mom that's 87 that I, I really, really would like to get her situated here in Nevada, but it all filled up already before you even turn a blink an eye. And you know, I think the hmm. I think all these states need to do if they want a suggestion for me, I'm simple man, simple no nothing man, or I don't know anything at all about anything, but. You want, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there. Why not go ahead and have in major cities, central locations that are running 24 seven, you're on 24 seven round the clock. Seems like an automatic to me, especially here in Vegas, 
We're 24 seven series, uh, city. We can go ahead and just boom, boom, boom. But then again, only a few locations around the country are gone to that. I think it's a mistake. I think it's something that if you have the supply, you should go ahead and get as many people vaccinated, at least on the way and start up as you can. But I'm I'm rooting for you, Tom. Uh, I don't know when I'll get it. Maybe 2025, but at the earliest, I don't know. It's seemingly at this rate, but I'm hoping for you and your family and and I'm hoping for my family as well. I know my wife did get her second one, so I'm very thankful for her as a first responder. I know Sean that we worry about who had to leave us right now. Uh, Sean, as a first responder, we're hoping he gets taken care of as well because he has to interact quite heavily with individuals that that could possibly have it and transmit it easily to him. So again, we're just rooting for everybody out there rooting for your continued health. We see what the damage it's doing out there with the coronavirus, as far as not only on our lives, health wise with our families, we see again with our, all of our prayers and thoughts with Carl Anthony towns. I mean, the fact that he's got it now after all that it's done to just to decimate his family is just truly saddening indeed. And, it is heartbreaking, just absolutely heartbreaking. So our, our prayers and thoughts are with him, uh, not only his mom, but six members of his family. I mean, that's just that's just a, a terrible. That, that's just very drastic. And anybody who doesn't think this is real just needs to have a heart-to-heart conversation with, with Carl Anthony Towns. And he could tell you, you know, I think face-to-face or video-to-video that at least it's something right now that you need to take seriously. So... I will just say this and uh, that, again, we're, the Lakers are a great distraction for us from all the issues and problems that are going on in our world right now. So I'm enjoying it thoroughly every time I get a chance to sit down with my daughter or my, my wife and we get a chance to check it out. So I'm, I'm very grateful to the league, the NBA. I know they're trying everything that they can, obviously, for monetary, monetary reasons, monetary reasons for why they want to go ahead and continue what they want to continue. Mm-hmm. I know that the games are being canceled in some form or fashion with some teams, but I'm glad what they're able to go ahead and continue the season. And I'm just looking forward to seeing more great games. I'm hoping that the Lakers will get a chance to play on Monday as well. So Laker, Tom, any last thoughts on the way out? No, good win tonight, Gerald, and have the weekend off and hopefully we'll get some writing in and looking forward to the game on Monday and Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King's holiday. Absolutely. And I just want to tell everybody out there, if for my Pop Culture Cosmos shows, did a great show that dropped this past Friday. So please check that out. You want to go ahead and check out what I observed and saw at CES 2021, a virtual fashion. I couldn't go physically because it wasn't there physically this year, but it was interesting nonetheless. Plus also as well, we talk about Star Wars, Marvel, and so much more. Plus, for Monday, I will have a full review of the first two episodes of WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. So hopefully you get a chance to check that out indeed. But Laker Tom, another big win for the Lakers. This is getting old habit, but I like this habit. I like it when they do it. 112 to 95, victory over the New Orleans Pelicans. Let's keep it rolling, Lakers. Let's keep it rolling, rolling, rolling like the song right there for you. Hoping they'll continue that on Monday to celebrate Martin Luther King Day and remember and honor a great man by winning the late game against the Golden State Warriors. And we'll be here post game for you talking about all the great games on Monday, plus also as well, hopefully another Lakers win right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.